Our text tells us that the Passover was six days out and our Lord went to Bethany. Bethany was two miles from Jerusalem, a little village, village on the slope, eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. It was the final station on the road from Jericho to Jerusalem. Next stop would be Jerusalem. Two miles from Jerusalem in Bethany was the house or the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. An interesting thing about uh, Jesus coming to Bethany at this time is that humanly speaking, our Lord put himself in mortal danger. For Jerusalem at the time was the headquarters for all the forces that were arrayed against Jesus. All of his enemies had their headquarters in Jerusalem. That really causes me to have great respect for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Because just being two miles away from the tip of the spear for Jesus' resistance was a home of uh, two sisters and their brother who loved Jesus despite being two miles from a city filled with Jesus haters and where Jesus would eventually be put to death. They loved him. And not only did they love him, but they were public with their love. See, Having a secret love for Jesus is no good. I love the Lord, but I keep it to myself. You don't love the Lord. Because you can't love the Lord and keep it to yourself. Amen. Uh, one man said this one time, and I agree with him. He said that if you don't know what a person's passion is, if after you've met them for, oh, five to ten minutes, if you don't know what their passion is, it is because they don't have one. Because what people are passionate about comes out of their mouth. They talk about it. They find ways to bring it up because it's their passion. If you love Jesus and don't nobody know you love Jesus, uh, but you and him, Jesus knows that you don't love him. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus loved Jesus. And the text tells us that they loved him so much that they had a dinner party for the Lord. Hallelujah. They threw a supper, according to our text, in Jesus' honor. Verse 2 says, uh, there they made him a supper. It was in his honor. Jesus was the guest of honor. Isn't that something? To have Jesus to come to your house. Uh, the guest of honor. And the text tells us uh, that uh, Lazarus set, was one of them that sat at the table with him. Now, Lazarus uh, had just been raised from the dead. In chapter 11, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. And the Lord raised him from the dead. And, uh, and so Jesus is uh, sitting there at the table. Lazarus is invited. And there's this big party for Jesus. If you study Mark's gospel and Matthew's gospel, you will see, however, that the place of the gathering was in Bethany, but not at the home 
of uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, but they had it at the home of a man named Simon the leper. Simon was a man who had leprosy, but Jesus healed him. And Simon said, let me host this party. Good God Almighty. And you know, you know Simon had a bad case of leprosy because even after Jesus healed him, the moniker stuck. All of his life he was known as Simon the leper, even when he was no longer a leper. So at Simon's house, they throw this extravagant dinner for our Lord. And I see my Lord as I talk to you sitting there at the table being the guest of honor. The Bible tells us that the disciples were there. And our text lets us know that there were onlookers, there were people peeking in the windows, and standing across the street, and the word had gotten out that not only is Jesus in that house, but Lazarus, who had been, uh, who had died and was buried and was dead for four days. And Jesus raised him from the dead and the man is sitting there at the table. He's not a zombie. He's not the undead. He's not grotesque. There is no, nothing rot. There's no rotten flesh falling from his, his, his uh, skeletal frame. Uh, he wouldn't fit in the series, The Walking Dead. He's alive. And he looks good. And he's sitting at the table. So all of this was going on. And while this was going on, the religious leaders was trying to figure out how can we kill Jesus and how can we kill Lazarus? Because since he raised Lazarus from the dead, we've lost a whole lot of followers because uh, we can't raise anybody from the dead. Matter of fact, we haven't worked any miracles at all. So it looked like the momentum is on Jesus's side. Can I get a witness? So now, Martha, according to the text, is serving. And you know, uh, Martha uh, was a servant of the Lord. And, and, and you know, one time, a few months earlier, Jesus had been at their house, and uh, Martha kind of, kind of missed it a little bit uh, in her servitude, because she's there, and, and she's working, according to Luke's Gospel, chapter uh, 10, verse 38. It says, now it came to pass, uh, as they went, uh, he entered into a certain village and at a certain woman, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. So Martha is being a great host. She's a, she's a worker. And, uh, but Martha was encumbered. She was overcome uh, about much serving. She wanted to be the hostess with the mostess. She wanted to make sure the food was right. You understand that. She wanted to make sure the guest was well taken care of. And by the way, Mary and Martha and Lazarus uh, were quite well off. Uh, they were wealthy people because they could throw these parties and, and, and things like that and celebrate that way. And not everybody in Palestine uh, could do it. But uh, uh, here's Mary sitting at Jesus' feet, Martha working, and she came to Jesus and said, Lord, uh, dost thou not care? You can tell she was worried because this is not even proper uh, talk. Uh, she says, Lord, do you not care that my sister have left me to, ser to serve alone? Says, so how about uh, telling her to get up and help me out? <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful. You are worried and troubled 
about many things, but one thing is needful, and that Mary have chosen, and that have chosen, that Mary have chosen is that good thing, the good part, which shall not be taken from her. You see, the take home lesson from what Jesus was saying about Mary is, the Lord wants our affection above our service. See, some of us are serving in the church, but we don't love the Lord. Amen. He wants us to love him first. Now, he need, we need servants, but you got to love the Lord. This is why some of us are so easily offended, so easy to leave the church, it's so easy to quit, it's so easy to give up. You don't know, your problem is you don't love the Lord like you ought to. See, the Lord wants our affection first. Amen. The reason you struggle with attending church is you don't love the Lord. Now, you say, well, I don't want to hear what Wooden has to say. You don't love the Lord. It's not me. It's you don't love the Lord. When you love the Lord, when the Lord gets your affections, that makes all the difference in the world. You see, service may be tainted with pride and self-importance and self-interest. Some of us serve because we want to be promoted. Not everybody. Some of us serve because we want to be seen. Some of us serve because it's a pride thing. Yeah, all those things are motives to serving. But when it comes to loving Jesus, you can't love him but for one reason. Amen. I, David said, I love the Lord because he heard my cry. Isn't that amazing? See, our Lord values occupation with him above all else. He says, I'm not going to take this away from Mary. She enjoys being occupied. Uh, I enjoy her occupation uh, with me. Charles R. Inman said this, our first need is to sit at his feet and learn his will. Then in our task, we shall be calm and peaceful and kindly. See, some of the workers are mean because we're not attached to him. See, when the job starts to, it begins to get to you too much and you become too negative and out of your mouth is church folk this and church folk that and them folk this and the people that and, and, and everything you have to say is negative it's time then to pull back and get, get alone with God and let the Lord deal with you. Then you're ready to come out and serve again. So let me, let me hurry here. And so while the dinner is going on, I'm not lost, while the dinner is going on, Mary does something that is amazing. Bible says in verse 3 of John 12, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard. Mary gets this ointment. Matthew 26 and Mark 14 tells us that it's very precious. Our text tells us that it's very costly. Any way you look at it, it wasn't cheap. And notice the emphasis that the Bible puts on the value of it. Now, I know that we say God doesn't value money. We say those things doesn't matter to God. Well, the Lord tells us that it was very costly. The Bible tells us that it was very precious. So apparently, value does matter. So she comes in with ointment, check this out, that was so valuable that it cost a year's wage. Now that's valuable. Praise the Lord. A year's wage. The yearly wage of the average uh, worker was the value of this ointment. And the ointment 
Mark tells us and Matthew tells us was in a alabaster box or better a jar and let me tell you this about uh, this jar of this alabaster that was only enough ointment spikenard in the jar for one anointing it was very expensive see you couldn't use it and there'd be enough left to anoint someone else and uh, to anoint someone else. Only enough for one anointing. And when you open the alabaster box, you didn't unscrew it. You had to break it open. Because once it's open, you had to use all of the contents. Nothing would be left. So Mary uh, spends her money. Are you praying for me? And get this expensive ointment and walks into the room in Simon the leper's house and uh, she takes it and begins to anoint the feet of Jesus a couple points there number one Jesus and the disciples uh, and the people in Lazarus were eating they didn't dine sitting in chairs as we do they were on the floor. Their feet were away from the table. The table was here, and they all, and on pillows and things, would lean in thusly and eat. So all of the men, their feet are pointing away from the table. All of the participants in there who were being served were men. Mary walks in. Now, John tells us, that she anoints his feet. Uh, Mark and, uh, and, uh, and Matthew says that she anointed his head. Well, Matthew 26 and 12, Jesus tells us that the woman anointed his whole body. So there's no contradiction. Mark and Matthew concentrates on the head. John concentrates on the feet. Then Jesus says in Matthew 26 and 12 that this woman anointed my whole body. What really happened was she started at his head and worked her way down to his feet. An interesting observation is uh, this Mary, when she walked in, uh, she had to be brave with all the men in there. And then she did something that uh, tells me that when she got ready to honor Jesus, she was not concerned at all about her own reputation. Some of us don't praise the Lord as we want, as we ought, because we're scared that we might look funny. We are concerned that praise is beneath us. I'm so-and-so. I can't be seen praising God. I'm educated. I, I'm this and that. Oh, no, that's the wrong thought. Matter of fact, the higher you go up, the more you ought to praise the Lord. You ought to be, you ought to be proud for somebody. Uh, Mr. Medical Doctor, you ought to be proud. Miss Nurse, Mr. Judge, Mr. Lawyer, Mr. Finance Officer, you ought to be glad to let somebody see you. Praising the God who placed you where you are, for you would not be there. Without the Lord. See, we'd rather believe an uh, idiom that is not possible than to believe that the Lord put us where we are. Oh, I'm where I am because I pull myself up by my bootstraps. I challenge anybody to put on boots and try to pull yourself up by bootstraps. It cannot anatomically be done. But we are where we are because the Lord picked us up. And the Lord placed us where we are. And the Lord gave us mercy. And the Lord gave us grace. And you ought to be glad to throw your hands up and throw your head back and lift your voice and say thank you to the Lord who brought us from so far. Good God. Mary walks in. Everybody say Mary. Mary. I like Mary. Mary, Mary, she loved Jesus. And you know what she does? She does something that uh, no Jewish woman would do 
in public because in public it was considered to be bad taste. It was considered to be immoral. It made her look like a prostitute uh, if she did this thing in public. And yet, uh, when she got ready to honor the Lord, we've already discovered that she was not concerned about the cost. Didn't matter how much it cost. She wanted to honor him. Now we're going to find out that she was not concerned about her personal reputation. Because she's about to do something that would cost her her reputation. As a godly woman. Because godly women and uh, don't do certain things. You know what the godly women never did in uh, uh, Jesus' lifetime? They never wore their hair down in public. They wore their hair up. See, uh, Charlie, uh, the, the silver fox, the late Charlie Rich was on to something. He said, when we get behind closed doors and she lets her hair hang down. Then she makes me glad that I'm her man. For no one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Some of y'all don't, don't remember that. You're too, you're too young. But you know what I'm talking about. Mary walks in. All the men in there. With this, with this expensive jaw. And reaches up in front of all of them. And her hair with her beautiful self falls down in public and then you know a woman's hair Bible tells us uh, is her glory so she takes her glory and uh, began to use her glory and her money to honor God she breaks open this alabaster box and begin to pour the ointment on Jesus. The, the, the aroma, the fragrance feel the air. Jesus lays there and like this woman began to anoint him from the crown of her head and to work her way all the way down to the soles of his, of his feet. Then she takes her hair. Notice this. She didn't use her hair to anoint his head. She didn't use her hair to anoint his face. She didn't even use her hair to wipe his hands. She used her hair to wipe his feet. The feet were considered to be, praise the Lord, the most unattractive part of the anatomy. The feet washing was something that was considered to be the menial task of slaves. Yes, sir. A feet washing was considered to be such a menial task that Jesus' disciples was, uh, was unwilling to wash one another's feet. So in John 13, Jesus had to wash their feet to demonstrate true humility. And then said, after, now that I've washed your feet, you got to wash one another's feet. So nobody wanted to wash anybody's feet. But Mary, recognizing who Jesus is and wanting to really honor him, she said, uh, my hair is not good enough uh, for his face. My hair is not good enough for his hand. The only place that I can use my hair on Jesus is to wipe his feet. Sound like what John said, there cometh one after me who is mightier than I, whose shoe latches I'm not able to bear. He went down to his feet. I wonder tonight, today, is there anybody here who would use their wonderful hands? Is there any lady here who symbolically would use her uh, pretty hair? I don't care how you got it. I wonder 
if there's a if there's a saint if there's a saint in this room who would do what is necessary to give honor to Jesus Christ she began to wipe his feet with the hairs of her head and see there's something that you got to get out of this because see when true when you've been in the presence of the Lord and anytime you begin to worship God guess what the fragrance gets on you too because when Mary was finished she smelled like the same stuff that she had put on Jesus that's why when you've been in a good church service and the anointing is on you people can tell when you've been in the presence of the Lord because there's an aroma that's on you because you've touched Jesus and when you touch Jesus he'll touch you back so Mary begins to wipe his feet and begin to cry and begin to praise the Lord and begin to practice this perfect act of worship it was perfectly consistent an expensive dinner with an expensive guest and you bring out an expensive perfume and then you trade you she traded her glory for his i'm going to give you a moment here to trade to trade your reputation i want to give you a moment here to lay down your pride i want to give you a moment here to throw aside your title no don't throw it aside keep the title and praise him anyhow don't shed it keep it and say loud I just want to thank you for being good to me for dying on the cross for me somebody give him honor right now good God almighty thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on up a room, tell him thank you. Tell the Lord glory in the name of Jesus. I want even the men to be like Mary. I want the women to be like Mary. Mary wasn't concerned about who saw her. Mary didn't care what those men thought. Mary didn't care what anybody had to say. She wanted to do one thing. She wanted to honor. Jesus Christ, the one who raised her brother from the dead, the one who wrought those miracles. She looked at him and saw that he was worthy of her making a spectacle of herself. He was worthy of her sacrificing a reputation. She, he was worthy of Jesus being praised. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.